And I think, I think sometimes, even as Christians, we wonder, man, like, what am I doing? Like, what is my purpose? What is God calling me to? And we know at the very least, if you're a, if you're a Gentile Christian here this morning, that you are a part of what God is doing to bring the Jewish people to faith in him. And if you are a Jewish believer here this morning, you are part of a chosen remnant. Man, you have an incredible purpose. Every single one who's a believer in Jesus Christ. And so this story of scripture, it doesn't just kind of remain in these pages. It stretches out all the way to today. And we're still a part of all of this playing out. And that's something that can cause us to step back and just be in awe of God and praise him. And God, you've given me a purpose in this world. God, you are so great. You are so uh, sovereign in this world. How unsearchable your judgments, God. God, your wisdom is incredible. Second, the story of Scripture shows us that God's kindness is available to everyone. Man, do you notice the patience and the kindness of God? God's kindness to the Gentiles. God's kindness to the Jewish people. Yes, he says severity towards those who are unbelieving, but there's kindness that's available. He says, if you remain in my kindness, that word remain, uh, that word remain is the same word that Jesus used in John chapter 15 when he said, remain in me or abide in me. We're to remain, to continue to trust, to continue to live in this kind of present tense faith and trust in Jesus. We're called to remain in his kindness. Like, why would we not want to? Again, something that stirs up praise for us is just, just seeing the kindness of God that's available, seeing the mercy of God that's available, seeing the way that you know, God has a plan to extend his kindness to all people. The story of scripture shows us that God doesn't give up on anyone. As Paul speaks to his Jewish brothers and sisters, he's saying, hey, God hasn't given up on Israel in Romans chapter 10, at the end of that chapter, he talks about God stretching out his hands all day long to his people. God doesn't give up on anyone. And that should spark an explosion of praise as we, even for us, as we look at our own lives, and it's like I look at my life and I'm like, man, I would have given up on me a long time ago. But God doesn't give up on anyone in the same way Man, maybe there are people in your life that you're tempted to give up on. But remember Paul's prayers for his people in chapter 10 and chapter 9. In chapter 10, he says, my heart's desire and prayer to God concerning them is for their salvation. Um, and in chapter 9, he says, you know, I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. I wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for their sake. So who do you feel like that about? Is there a group or is there a, a, a person where, you know, I certainly feel like that about my kids. I certainly feel like that about people that uh, we pray regularly for that they will be saved. And, and it's God's heart for the world that we see Paul sharing here. It's God's heart for the Jewish people that we see Paul sharing in that burden here. It's a, it's a holy privilege to carry that burden for the lost, God's stretching out his hands to the world. Man, the kindness that he has for us and we can share in that kind of compassion and love. So again, God doesn't give up on anyone, but you also get to be a part of seeing God work in the lives of people around you. You get to be a part of the fulfillment of some of these promises. And so for us, hopefully this morning, we have a clearer picture of just the breathtaking landscape of scripture. Hopefully for us, we're, we're humbled as we realize how big God is, but also we have a, a confidence that God has called us to a purpose.